The Dandy Dinmont Terrier is a small Scottish dog breed in the Terrier family. The breed has a very long body, short legs, and a distinctive top knot of hair on the head. They are friendly but tough and are suitable for interaction with older children. There are no breed-specific health concerns, but they can be affected by spinal problems due to their elongated body, and the breed is affected by canine cancer at a higher than average rate. The breed is named after a fictional character in Sir Walter Scott's novel, Guy Mannering. This character, Dandy Dinmont, is thought to be partly based on James Davidson, who is credited as the originator of the modern breed. Davidson's dogs descended from earlier terrier-owning families, including the Allens of Holystone, Northumberland. There are three breed clubs in the UK supporting the breed, although it is registered as a vulnerable native breed by the Kennel Club due to its low number of puppy registrations per year. History. The breed originates from the dogs, being used in the border country of Scotland and England. During the 1600s, they were used for hunting badgers and otters. Whilst their ultimate origin remains unknown, dogs owned by the Allens of Holystone Northumberland in the early 1700s are thought to have been involved in their early origins. These dogs may have been a type of border terrier, although other theories exist including the idea that they are a cross between Scottish terriers and Skye terriers. The head of this family was Willie Piper Allen, who was born in nearby Bellingham. He kept dogs for the hunting of otters. Lord Ravensworth once hired Allen to remove the otters from the pond in Esslington Park. Lord Ravensworth attempted to purchase one of Allen's dogs after he successfully removed the otters, which Allen refused. Allen died on 18 February 1779, and his dogs passed into the care of his son James. James' son eventually inherited the dogs and sold a dog named Old Pepper to Mr. Francis Summer who came from town Yetholm on the Scottish side of the border. Old Pepper was descended from one of Willie Allen's dogs who had worked Lord Ravensworth's manor. The breed remained relatively unknown outside of the borders until 1815, when Sir Walter Scott's novel Guy Mannering was published. Scott had spent time in the area, whilst the sheriff of Selkirkshire, and had learned of the prowess of these types of specialist terriers for working both fox and otter. When he wrote Guy Mannering, he included a character by the name of Dandy Dinmont who owned a number of terriers named Pepper and Mustard after the colors of their coats. The Dinmont character was partly based on the real-life farmer and terrier owner, James Davidson, who too used the generic terms of Pepper and Mustard for his dogs depending on their coats. Davidson's dogs came from a variety of sources including the dogs of the Allen, Anderson, and Foz families. Davidson documented his breeding, and he has been accepted as the originator of the modern breed. Some interbreeding with other breeds took place in the mid-1800s, which may have introduced Datshan blood into the breed, although certain breeders maintained purebred lines. The Datshan theory was first introduced by John Henry Walsh under the pseudonym of Stonehenge in the 1880s and was denied by many breeders of that era. By the mid-1800s, the breed was known as the Dandy Dinmont Terrier and became sought after for hunting after Scott's writings were published. They remain the only dog breed to have been named after a fictional character. Around this time the breed had some involvement in the development of the Bedlington Terrier. The Kennel Club formed in 1873 and, at the Fleece Hotel at Selkirk, Scottish Borders on 17 November 1875, the Dandy Dinmont Terrier Club was formed, becoming the third oldest breed club for dogs in the world. Lord Melgan was the society's first president, while Lee Bradshaw Smith was the first vice president. Breeders Hugh Dalziel and William Statchen were also involved in the formation of the club. The breed standard was created by William Wardlow Reed, another founding member of the club, with it was agreed to a year later at another meeting of the club. A club show was held for the first time in Carlisle in 1877. Shows after this were held in conjunction with other clubs on a yearly basis until 1928, when it moved to the Market Hall in Carlisle, where with the exception of during the Second World War the shows continued to be held until 1982. Shows continued to be held in the general area until 2001, when they moved south to Cheshire and Lancashire. The DDTC is not the only breed club in the UK. For a while several breed clubs were created in Scotland, but none lasted particularly long, except for the Scottish Dandy Dinmont Terrier Society which merged into the DDTC in 1929. Today, in addition to the DDTC, there are also the Southern Dandy Dinmont Terrier Society, and for Scotland, the Caledonian Dandy Dinmont Club. A Dandy Dinmont Terrier and the more numerous West Highland White Terrier. The breed was first registered with the American Kennel Club in 1888. The Dandy Dinmont Terrier was recognized by the United Kennel Club in 1918. During the Second World War many kennels were dispersed and the dogs destroyed due to both the lack of food caused by rationing and that of manpower. Following the war several kennels led the way to re, establishing the breed including the Bellmead Kennels, located first in Surrey before later moving to Old Windsor. 
Dandies continued to be bred up at Bellmead up until the early 1990s, when it passed into the hands of Battersea Dogs and Cats Home. In 2006, the Kennel Club recognized the Dandy Dinmont Terrier as one of the rarest dog breeds native to the British Isles, putting it on a new list of vulnerable native breeds. The breeds chosen for this list were those who originated in the UK and Ireland, but had less than 300 puppy registrations per year. One particularly low period was between July and September 2003, when only 21 puppies were registered, of which 18 were male. Overall that year, only 90 puppies were registered in the UK, compared to 9,823 for the West Highland White Terrier. Additionally numbers had dropped to low levels in America as well, with the AKC registering only 75 puppies in the same time period. Following work since 2006, the Dandy Dinmont registration numbers have improved slightly, with 151 puppies registered with the Kennel Club in 2010, the highest number for any year in the last 10 years. Of other breeds of native terrier, only the Skye, Sealyham, Manchester, and Glen of Immel terriers have lower registration figures. Description. The breed's attractive appearance has made them cute in the eyes of many dog lovers. Today Dandy Dinmont Terriers are not used for hunting, they live in houses, they are cared for no less than other decorative puppies. Description of the breed, is standard as the breed is officially recognized, hide at the withers about 25 cm, weight 9 to 11 kg, paws are short, the head is slightly oblong, looks disproportionately large in relation to the body, especially the paws, wide black nose, pronounced cheekbones emphasize the strength of powerful jaws a distinctive feature of the hunting breed. The eyes are large, set wide apart, usually dark brown. Ears are wide, long, drooping, developing when running. Muscular neck emphasizes a strong physique. The tail is long, thick. The coat is long, slightly curled. The standard Dandy Dinmont Terrier colors are mustard, pepper. Occasionally, small white patches may appear in different parts of the body, especially on the chest. Character. Loyal and loyal. They are attached to family members, but only one is recognized as the owner, and it is he who is obeyed without question. They can live peacefully with children, but only if they do not show familiar behavior towards them. Play carefully. They get along with other pets, but in some circumstances they can perceive them as prey. First of all, bad contact occurs with rodents and cats. This is due to residual hunting instincts. Cheerful and curious. They do not rush at strangers, they treat everyone at first neutral, then positively. They can be wary and distrustful if this is the surrounding situation. When close ones are in danger, they attack without hesitation, even if the enemy is stronger and larger. They are very calm but also energetic. They like to spend time on the street. Excellent runners. Suitable for those owners who lead an active lifestyle. For example, they will perfectly cope with running a bike. They are also suitable for a home and measured life. The absence of significant loads is tolerated without problems. Sometimes they behave wayward and stubborn. This is very noticeable when they are jealous of loved ones or are dissatisfied with classes. They need a steady hand and correct leadership. I like praise, for example, if they do something right or quickly memorize commands. Maintenance and care. Unpretentious dogs that can easily live in a city apartment or private house. They need a lot of time outside and constant physical activity. Walking should be done two to three times a day for a period of 40 minutes to one